Okay. Well, I have some spaghetti squash and some veggie balls right there. I got my Alfredo sauce right here. And I just cooked up some flat bread and we got some butter. Grandma's been sick for the past, oh, I don't know, three days or so. I had some kind of a flu. <coughs> I'm gonna, I need to apologize in advance for the coughing. I, ca I can't help the coughing. The chest is all filled up. Hi, Mohammed. So, um, yeah. And unfortunately, Oh, getting over the flu, Muhammad. Getting over the flu. I've been sick for about <coughs> for about three days, and unfortunately for me, I had to go to work like that. And also, I was supposed to have three days off, but they scheduled me to work on my first day off, which was last evening back so I can show you the squash. I think we'll take the meatballs and, and move. Hi, Miss Mama, Daughter, Sister. We'll take the veggie meatballs and move them to the side. And then we'll, um, hi, um, hi, Amane. Hi, Nancy. So, hi, G. Sarah. So basically, I had baked this for about 52 minutes, 400 degrees. And you've seen this before. To those of you that have never seen it, this is what it looks like. Um, when you take the spaghetti squash out, hence looking like spaghetti, that's why it's called spaghetti squash. I took this out of the oven, as you can see by the steam, about um, maybe 10 minutes ago. And I had mentioned cooking this. Hi, Living for Jesus. I want you all to please to keep living for Jesus in your prayers. Um, keep her in your prayers for physical healing. You're home now? Okay. Keep her... I, I, I don't want to reveal too much. I let her reveal whatever she wants to. But living for Jesus, I want you to keep her in prayer for her health. Hi, Miss Lena. Thank you so much for stopping in, Lena. Thank you for the hearts and the happy face and the flower, honey. Did Okay, what is supposed to happen? You said on Monday. Is that correct? Please forgive me. I, I My head's still kind of swimming. Um... Yes, Miss Mama, daughter, sister. Um, I had the flu. I still do, in a sense, for about three days. The coughing, and you know what you do when you cough. I uh, just it was a constant, constant cough, and I had to go to work like that. Y'all see what she just typed? She is going to be having a hysterectomy. And when I saw your words, I, I don't want to, I, I, I didn't say anything like, what's the surgery about? Because, you know, you don't know if a person wants to share something very personal. I'm not that kind of a person. What is it? What are you doing? What's going, you know what I'm saying? Because the Heavenly Father knows. Glory to the Most High. The Heavenly Father knows what you're going through. And if it's health related, I can say a prayer like, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever procedure that she's needing to have done, I pray that you will guide the doctor or the surgeon's hand. Whatever medication is required for her condition, I pray that you will infuse her body with complete healing. I was very uncomfortable when you gave the reasoning, if I may be um, uh, just frank with you, that it was fibroids, but I guess it must be to such a degree that the surge, that the doctor is saying, look, it's to this degree. Glory to the Most High. 
And thank you, G. Sarah, so very much. Thank you so much, Miss Lena and Miss Mama, Daughter, Sister. You're not, don't apologize for making me uncomfortable. I always have a side eye when it comes to doctors. I always do. I should have went to the doctor three days ago, but I refused. Oops. I refused. It was that bad, but it's not, not, no, it's, it's, that, that is lightweight, lightweight in comparison to what you were experiencing, honey. This is not a Lynn situation. This is a living for Jesus situation. But how many of you know when you have the flu, it kind of beats you up and you feel kind of, you know, you just feel your body is just. I've had this before and I avoid getting it for an entire year by the grace of Almighty God. It's the same thing every other year, every year as we get the flu. Y'all know. Y'all know. Yes, living for Jesus, I understand. But every once in a while, it's like something will happen and you sense in your spirit, this is a little more serious than what I think it is. Honey, I think I should go to the doctor and you do. And I'm glad that you did. Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, the, 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 the extremely sore throat, then the buildup of phlegm, then the coughing and the coughing, then the achiness all over your body, then you don't really feel that hungry. Y'all know the flu affects people in different ways. The flu always goes after my throat. It goes right after my throat, where it's very raw, and then the coughing. Yes. So uh, getting back to something that's very minuscule, just the spaghetti squash and the, the veggie meatballs. I said I was going to do a video about it, and I was in no shape three days ago to do anything. Now, what I did is I lived in the bed, and then I would get up and shower, and ju the only physical thing I would do was my job. Have you all ever had to drag yourself to work when you don't feel good? You're like, look, Father, in Jesus' name, whether it's 8, 10, or 12 hours, just give me glory to the Most High. Just give me the, mo give me the strength to make it through my shift. Y'all, I think a lot of you can relate. Just give me the strength to drive and make sure I'm safe driving. Give me the patience to deal. Help me to make it through these two to three hours till I get to that first break. So I can get some liquids in me and just sort of sit back from my break and kind of drag yourself. That's what I did. I said, no, no, I'm not going. This, this is uh, Alfredo. And I have very little Alfredo. I, I mean, uh, I on purpose only wanted to use a little bit. Y'all pardon me. But anyways. So I had a very kind person as I left a comment, as I left a comment under a video where I was feeling pretty bad emotionally. Yes, I was feeling pretty bad emotionally. And uh, the, you're not late, Linda Crazy for Yarn. Hi, Mrs. H. I only have a cell phone out here. Y'all pardon me. Give me a second. Oh, goodness gracious. I feel like my head is... Hi, green pastures. I feel like my head is kind of swimming. But I refuse to lay over. I refuse to lay over and give up. You know how we are. There's something very special about our faith. There's something very special about that. Where despite the circumstances, we just keep going. Oh, I'm so sorry, honey. I have no idea. I, I've been, um, I, it's kind of weird for about three different channels where you go to leave a comment, I can't leave a comment. I don't know why I can't leave a comment. 
elderberry tea. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for the wonderful meal that you have provided. A blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That Heavenly Father, I, I want to talk to you and bring before you our sister living for Jesus. Who is going in, as you know, for surgery. We're all here together and are going to come into agreement. That the Holy Spirit is already in, in, in the operating room ahead of her. That you will guide the surgeon's hand. And that the surgery will be, it would go very smoothly. And that she will come through this 100% whole. We pray for supernatural healing. A quick healing after the surgery. That from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, that she will be 100% whole. Strengthen her husband as he helps to care for her. Bless their union in their marriage and their family and their children. Bring this all together in such a way that living for Jesus will be able to get some really good rest as she recovers from her surgery. And bring peace into the household as there is peace already but bring a supernatural peace and quiet so our sister can quietly and comfortably rest. I thank you so very much for this opportunity to come before your throne of grace on Living for Jesus' behalf. I thank you so much, Lord. We thank you in advance as it is already done in the spirit and we all come into agreement, and whoever comes in here, once this becomes a video, we all agree. Come into agreement for it. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, great Yahweh, we do pray and ask it. In the name of Jesus Christ, most high God, we come into agreement. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I know that it's enough that you have to have surgery, but you have a husband, you have children, and the household has to be to keep, to keep going. And what I want is I, 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 I want things to happen in such a way for you living for Jesus that you'll be able to rest, you know, and that you will be comfortable as you're laid up. Having small children is a full-time job. Hallelujah. Having small children and a husband, caring for those children is a full job, full-time job. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so I kind of see each category of your life. And I want everything to kind of come together smoothly for you. Yes, I do. A lot of us older ladies, we know what it's like to have children, to be raising our children, and then to deal with other things while we are raising our children is extra tough. Six weeks, yes ma'am. I was watching a video, I've been, I've just been watching sermons I've been trying my best just to watch sermons. I've been trying my best to understand why my brain, why my mind is having to go through what it's going through. I've got to pick you up if I can. And I got a regular blouse on, but I got my jammy pants on. <laughs> I've got to take this and put it in the microwave. 
that will warm up. But yes. And so I've been watching a couple of sermons. Yes, living for Jesus, I totally understand. Yes, I do. Nobody wants to go. Nobody wants to go into surgery like that. I don't want you to have to have surgery. But if he's determined, if, if, if the doctor has determined it's to such a degree that this is required, well, then we're going to go ahead and have the surgery. And our, our, you know, as a result of that, our, our, our uh, job, if you will, for lack of a better term, is to keep you in prayer as you go through each step. Entry into the hospital, surgery, recovery, everything being mended and put back together, and then your body to adjust in such a way that you're 100%. See, I, I'm a little bit of a nut job in how I think about people. As they, it doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But as a person tells me about a situation, I see it in my head. And then I see each part of that situation. As the father has put me in a, other people's places. Yes, he has. He'll put you in another person's place. And... kind of go through things you understand what it's like to go through something and the father touches your heart just so no you can talk about yourself hi Regina you can talk about yourself all you want anybody in here can talk about themselves you're sitting in there scared or worried about a certain set situation you know you want to talk about your job you want to talk about what you're going through physically that's what we're all here for each other there's what 20 people in here that's what we come in here for I know that's why I come in here I'm going through through something small or something huge and I don't have any friends around here I have mr. Tim but sometimes there's only certain set things you can talk to a man about. You know, he understands that I'm not feeling that well. This, that, and the other thing. Yes, Carol Bear, exactly. Hi, Carol Bear. Like I said, y'all pardon me, and I and I beg your forgiveness for missing some of what you say. I beg your forgiveness. Yes, Miss Lena, exactly. Very wise. That's wisdom right there, Miss Lena. That is wisdom right there. And I apologize profusely to all of you if I've missed some of the things that you have said because I'll be talking and completely miss something. And sometimes it's something very important. And I forget the name of this young lady who has been saying about three times, Hi, Patricia. Yes, yes. Miss Patricia, exactly. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. We're not going to let the devil step in here and have living for Jesus afraid. No, we're not. No, we are not. And the and the Father doesn't the Father doesn't sit here, you know, uh, with his arms folded and a straight face. They are a thing of the past. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing. He he understands our frame as, as one of the Psalms talks about our frame. He understands that we are but dust. He sees me being terrified. Sometimes I get terrified. Sometimes I get terrified at the thought of going to work. Sometimes it's the day before work and I get scared like a child. Yes, I do. And I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes I get scared. I don't know what I'm going to face or what I'm going to have to deal with. And, and here's a silly example where I need to, I need, I need more faith. Glory. Let me, let me, I have to press this button so I can see what Mrs. H just said. 
Living for Jesus, growth and tumors have no right to my body. They are a thing of the past, for I am delivered from the authority of darkness. Amen. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It just flew right out of my head. It'll come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my head's kind of swimmy. I'm kind of swimmy in my head. But so here I am. I'm thinking to myself, oh, they, I, 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 Lord, you know, I don't feel well. You know, I'm being a big baby. Sometimes let's be truthful. I can be a big baby when I don't feel good. I can be a big baby when everything isn't lined up perfectly. And the Lord's, it's like, okay, I want this. I want to work this many hours. I, 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 I'm looking forward to having my three days off. And um, all of a sudden they schedule me another day. But guess what? They scheduled another day for everybody else. They needed us to come in that extra day. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry living for Jesus. Four pints? Lord God in heaven, have mercy. I'm so glad that you're home now. And that's the other thing that we must pray for is for your body to be strong. For your body to be strong. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm like, oh, goodness. And I look and they said I was working in a, a different glory to God, that I glory to God, that I was working in a different department and I didn't like the thought, the thought. And of course, it was a typo. And I ended up working. I, I think I had told you before that I wanted to be on the B team, B as in boy, but I am on the D team, D as in David. <coughs> <clears throat> so for that extra day, I got to work with the B team and they were very, very happy to see me. You see, my, my work life could be so much better if I could work with the B team. Um, for one thing, you have Mr. F. Mr. F is saved by the grace of Almighty God. He calls me grandma. He comes running, oh, grandma, how are you? It's a, like the difference between the daylight and the nighttime with these two different groups of people. It's very strange where with my group of people, it seems like you can almost feel a thickness of discord in the air. You can feel negativity in the air with this group of people that I work with, even and the other departments as we are all the D team, but in different departments. But the B team, there's a lightness in the air, light, a, like a feather in the air, where I'm working the same work, but I don't feel a sense of stress at all. And I had expressed to my son, I call them my sons, well, there's three of them, these three boys. Um, I said, I don't understand. I put in to work with y'all and they asked for me to work with them, but it was not, not to be done. So the father granted that I had to work. That's fine. But at least he granted me to work with a group of people that I do so enjoy. Hi, she is Lawanda. Not the ovaries? Okay, that's a good thing. I just take it, I just take it to myself. I just sit here and think about it. I remember my mother had a hysterectomy. And I think they left her one ovary. One ovary. Mahela? Hi, Emma Mahala and Yolanda. Okay, that's good then. If there's anything to come out of it, it's a partial. That's good. 
that part of it is good, let's just say. I want to make sure to say my words correctly. But yeah, at least, you know, if I had to have work, it was with people that I enjoy. And I said, and I said to my son, I call them my sons. I said, I don't know why I really, if I had the opportunity to come on to this group, I would. So a little bit later, here comes my supervisor. Hi, Evelyn Jones. I said, uh, he said, oh, I hear my supervisor comes up to me. He goes, oh, I hear you want to leave me. And I said, don't sit there and try to make me feel guilty. I go, uh, from the very beginning, I've been wanting to work with the people that I'm working with right now, but they won't let me. I said, this has no bearing on how I feel about you as a supervisor. I think you're a great supervisor. I said, but you know that these young men, these young men, there's no emotion involved. They want to come in. They're each at their workstations, running machinery or what have you. They want to come in and just do their job, do it with excellence, and there's none of this emotional stuff. Thank you for doing that, Miss Regina. Thank you so very much. So, yeah, I, I, I never understood why they had me on this team. Thank you, Mahala. Thank you so very much. Yeah, I just have it with the um, the little dark spots you see there are the vegetable, the veggie meatballs. It really is good. It really is good. And having it with the veggie meatballs and the squash, uh, the spaghetti squash as well, no meat at all. The naughty is the, the naughty is the, um, Alfredo sauce. Yeah, I, I don't understand why I'm, I'm with this group of people. Maybe I'm supposed to infuse some, um, hi Loretta. Maybe I'm so supposed to infuse something with them. I don't know. And then I saw two of my sons. My other son, I didn't even realize was there. He came over at the very end when I was taking everything off and washing my arms and getting cleaned up at this big sink they have. He goes, Grandma! He goes, I didn't realize you were here. I was in the other department. He goes, I would have came over and visited with you for a little while if I knew you were here. Thank you, Living Eclectic. No bananas today. Tess Cook's for you. Just the squash and the veggie meatballs. That's all. <clears throat> like I said, I'm probably going to need about three or four days to feel 100%. But if I would have came on yesterday or the day before, all I would have been doing is coughing. Coughing and coughing. Y'all Y'all know. So I've been trying to drink a, a lot of water. I haven't been that, I haven't really been that hungry. This is, um, yesterday I started eating again, if you will. And today I felt more hungry. So here we are. I've been watching sermons on faith. Watching sermons on faith. is what I've been doing and just laying in that bed. And like I say, well, if you don't feel good, but you don't have any sick time, but you can. Thank you, Tess Cooks, for you. Thank you so very much, Sister Tess. Um, I forgot there's something else. I'm sorry. I've got eight thoughts floating around in my head at the same time. I forget who, oh, I want to roll back the conversation to where I said I was uncomfortable at work or whatever. 
I watched a video, I watched a sermon, and I left a comment for the people to pray for me because I was literally at work and I was very upset. And people uh, left comments back that they would. And one person left a comment to read Psalm number 31. Read Psalm number 31 before you go to work. And so I did. And at one point, the machinery stopped. No, no, I'm fine living for Jesus. Uh, this, this here is a drop in the bucket in comparison to what you are experiencing. This is about you and the 26 of you. That's what this is about. No, no, it, I thank you so very much. I thank you for much, very much for saying that. But this is about the 27 of you. That's what this is about. So I put my smaller Bible in a plastic in a Walmart bag and put it in my bigger bag and I brought it into work. This was the first day where I was a little bit sicker, you know, when you first get the flu. And it was um, before midnight. And I'm just trying to kind of putter my way through. Hi, DB. I'm trying to putter my way through. You know, we're just trying to drag our way through. And you're not feeling 100%. You're just trying to drag your way through, get your money, and go home. So I went into the bag and sat there on some steps right there at work. Opened up that Bible and read Psalm 31 out loud. And I kept reading. I got all the way to Psalm about Psalm number 36. Yep, out loud right there at work. It's politically incorrect. You can't be praying at work. You can't be saying praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus, at work. Some people might get offended. Go ahead and get offended. Go ahead and get offended. I'm going to say praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus, at work. I'm not going to tell you to believe what I believe. But I need to be under the ark. I need to be under the protective ark. A-R-C. We're all under an ark. Glory to the most high God. We need to be under the ark of prayer. I don't care what, what people are saying about the Lord Jesus Christ if they don't believe him. You don't believe him? You have a right to your opinion. But guess what? I got a little newsflash. I have a right to mine. I sing about Jesus at the time clock. It doesn't make me holier than thou. I'm not obnoxious about it. But how many of you know if you're going down an aisle and there's about 50 people running machinery and all around you and they're all talking at the same time and some of them are giving you a dirty look, you're just simply trying to make it through the aisle and then you're trying to make it through another area and then you're trying to get over to your job. You don't know what devils are sitting around in there. All kinds of demons and imps in there. Why do I say that? Because not everybody is of God. Not everybody on the bus is of God. Not everybody on the subway train is of God. Not everybody in the Walmart going down the aisles is of God. Not everybody in the parking lot is of God. In school, in college, in the laundromat, no matter where you are out in the public, you know, you want to be under that arc of protection. If you're moving your lips and saying a prayer to yourself, don't you worry about what anybody thinks about that. You just go ahead and take care of business for yourself. How many of you know we need need prayer more than ever in these last days. And I don't care if I drop dead at 70 and that Jesus still hasn't returned. He's going to. Yes, he is. So I'm just going to keep praying and keep doing what I do. The devil tries to step in and slap me around a little bit and go into my mental capacities and mess with my head and try to bring back memories of my past and try to get me to think about my grandchildren, try to get me to be sad. And then, you know, I don't feel that well. And then I got to work extra day, extra day when I'm not feeling well getting my brain back together. And just when I get my brain back together and I'm starting to feel 
uh, uh, well uh, mentally. Then here comes something uh, physical, which is just the flu, which is no big deal that comes. How many of you know the enemy has uh, uh, has that little thing of arrows? Uh, he's got a whole bunch of them, and just when you get done with one situation, he pings off another one. Then you get done with that situation. You made it through that. You're wiping your you're wiping the sweat off your brow, and you're licking your wounds. And here he comes with another arrow, praying always in the spirit. Yes, praying always. Not worried about anybody's opinion. I know it's 2019. I know it's 2019. I wouldn't care if it was 2000, excuse me, <coughs> 2049. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Pardon me for not seeing the chat. He's today, the same yesterday, today, and forever, beloved. Yes, he is. I think I'm going to roll over. And I'm going to let the devil sit there and punch me in the face or slap me in the face or try to curse me in my head or try to try to um, have someone be negative looking at me through the eyes of another person. Sometimes the devil does that. Maybe I sound a bit obsessive, but sometimes the devil will look at you through the eyes of a stranger through the eyes of the unlearned, the ungodly, and the unsaved. People that are not Christ-like. People that have more invested in the world than they have invested in the Lord. You see? So yes, stay under your ark of protection, my beloved. You stay under the ark of your protection. If you were driven, driven to the place where you're scared of all you got to come out of you because you're frightened, uh, frightened in the human, Jesus, if that's all you can get out of your mouth, then get that out of your mouth. Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me to see the situation for what this really is. Remove the devil's distortion of what the situation is and let me see it for what it really is. And then all of a sudden, here comes your scripture starts to come. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Here comes all your scriptures back as that shield of faith goes up and it starts blocking all those darts that that enemy is tossing at you. I said, Lord, I don't even know how I made it through this shift. Oh, let me roll back again. After I was reading up to Psalm 36 or 37, and it was the first day where I wasn't feeling that good, but I had to go to work and the machinery stopped. Girl comes up to me. Oh, um, we're, we're leaving. The belt, the belt broke and it's going to take too long. I look up. I look up and there's a belt and the belt is shredded, shredded just like the spaghetti squash. And I got to go home three and a half hours early, get myself in the shower and get my blessed assurance in that bed and rest. Eight and a half hours instead of 12 is fine. But the father worked it out just so. Yes, he did. I apologize if I'm ping-ponging, meaning going from one subject matter to the other. But I get kind of irritated with myself when I start a sentence and then I go off into another subject matter and I don't come back to finish what I originally said. Hi, Allison. Yes, Mrs. H, that full armor. Herman Murray. Like I said, they're a very, very old school of church. It's, um, if you type in F-G-H-T, like the words fight, but F-G-H-T and Herman Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, they're very old school. It's a, it's a um, sorry about that. It's a traditional church, but it's very old school. You may agree with some of what he has to say. You may not agree. 
but he just preached from the King James Version of the Bible. And yes, it's the old school way of preaching. His grandfather started the church. And then he was mentored. And now his grandfather passed away at the age of 84 in his sleep years ago. And now he's in charge, if you will, or as the pastor to this church. They're old school to the degree, I said this before, where they believe that females should wear dresses and skirts. And females, you dress whatever you want to dress in. Yeah, biblically sound exactly, DB. He just reads from the scripture. I think he was very, very young, if you look at the old videos, where he was <coughs> in his late 20s or early 30s. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm sorry, my head's kind of swimmy and I'm a little bit tired. It's just one of those kinds of things where you work, you come home, you fall asleep for two and a half hours, and then you wake up, and then you fall asleep for another hour and a half, and then you that kind of thing. I haven't been sleeping solid, so I'm a little bit loopy, <laughs> all combined together. But I am... I think so. Pastor. <clears throat> Highway faring stranger. Yes, living for Jesus. Mrs. H, I do think that the shift messes with my sleep. Yeah, Pastor Charles Lawson is the real deal. Pastor Charles Lawson just takes the book. He opens it up. And reads from the word of God. There is no bells or whistles. They're very, very old school, if you will. Where they sing hymns. Hymns back in the day from the 30s and the 40s and stuff like that. And he just opens up the word and reads. <coughs> I am very sorry. Yeah, I'm just like, ugh. I feel like I've been through the ringer and back. Yes, living for Jesus, you're right. And he'll talk about things that are happening in today's society. Yes. There's something very, about Mr. Stan, uh, Pastor Stanley... There's something just so gentle, uh, even the way his voice sounds. Well, he's a very intelligent man. He knows his stuff. <clears throat> he makes it very relatable. His son, not so much. <clears throat> not so much. Jacob Prash, I'm glad you left that in the um in the uh chat there so I can look him up. In just a few more minutes. <sighs> yeah. I don't really have any ways to <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. Mm. Oh, mercy. My head feels swimmy. The, oh, the Greek and the Hebrew? Yes. I don't much, much know about the Greek and the Hebrew. I had a sister 
I won't call out her name because she, you know what I'm saying? But, <coughs> but she sent me this book. She sent me this, um, this book. And it talks about the original Greek and Hebrew, the original names of the Lord. And I thank you so very much, sister, for sending me that book. I've been reading just a little bit. But to be frank with you, like I said, um, <laughs> I've just been saving the energy for work. Shepherd Chap Shepherd's Chapel with Ar is it Arnold Murray? Is that Arnold Murray? I remember him. Arnold Murray. We lost him. I forget how many years ago we lo lost him. Yeah, I, I. To be honest with you, I don't feel like going nowhere. All I've been doing is laying up in that bed. I haven't been watching videos. I tried to watch bit, uh, bits and pieces of video. But it's like I'm just so I'm just so tired. And I'm not trying to be a big baby about it. Y'all know the flu just beats you up. It just, you know, your body's all tired. And I ain't 27 years old anymore. So it's all all the bit of just a smidge tougher. Just a smidge tougher when you're older. The other thing, have you uh, let's talk about something completely different. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, do y'all know what floaters are? Floaters in your eyes. You know, floaters. They look like little dots. If you look, if you look up into the sky, you can see them. They kind of float around in your eye. They'll look like a little piece of thread. They can be, they can be dark. Yeah, well, I noticed over the past three days in this eye right here, this eye right here, increase in floaters. Like in a day. Now I've been trying to figure that one out. It scared the it scared the you know what out of me. Where you all of a sudden you go to turn your eye one way and, and, and you sort of startled at first. Because I didn't realize there was a new one there. I've always had them since I was uh, 15 or whatever, but they've increased in this eye right here, in the left eye. Very annoying. You need to pray to get rid of those things. There's nothing really they can do about it. Yeah, I'll be careful. I, I'm going to, if it gets any worse, I'm going to go back to the eye doctor. I mean, I'm seeing fine. I'm not in any pain or anything like that. Oh, your mother was in the hospital? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I don't have my laptop out here. Hold on. Allison, how's your mother doing? Come on, chat. I'm trying to get to the news. Is she all right? Oh, she's better? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad she's doing better, Miss Allison. Miss Allison, thank you for letting us know. We will keep your mama in prayer. Yes, we will. We pray for everyone and their family, you see. Everyone and their family. On oxygen? Yes, ma'am. Your father too, DB. Y'all hear that, Miss Allison's mother, DB's father, and of course, living for Jesus for her surgery. I'm glad I came in. I'm glad I came in. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know, y'all.
Floaters are common with a yes, exactly. Yeah, it seems like the closer I'm getting to a small fortune an eye test. Oh, three to four weeks. Thank you. And then I, I was, of course, trying to watch videos about it. It talked about if you drink too much soda. Y'all know I drink soda. They talk about drinking cola. So I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reduce my intake of cola. Start doing what I know I should be doing. Start drinking more and more of this right here. Start drinking more and more water. You know, I ain't giving up my coffee, though. Oops. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, wayfaring stranger, you just made my day. I don't like when anything odd happens. Thank you so much for saying that, Miss Allison. Thank you so very much. Y'all are all wonderful people. Do you hear what I said? Y'all are just some wonderful, wonderful people. Thank you so very much. Know this, that, that we are not alone. Sometimes we go through something, whether like we're dealing with here, with people dealing with physical things that they're going through or will go through, right? And you think you're all alone in a certain set situation and you're not. That is one thing that the devil loves to do is to like you. Vitamin A and D. Thank you, love light. Hi, love light. Thank you, love light excuse me, is the enemy always, especially like me living by myself, he likes to make you feel isolated and tries to make you to believe that you're the only one going through something and also tries to shut our mouth and say, you know, we just want to be quiet. We don't want to share anything with anybody. <coughs> excuse me. We don't want to share this with anybody. I don't want anyone thinking that I'm trying. Here's a, a lie from hell. I don't want anyone to think that I'm that I, I'm trying to get them to feel sorry for me. That is a lie. That is a lie. You go on and share whatever it is you want to share. Because that enemy knows here we are together. There's 24 in here now. He don't want anybody praying behind us. Encouraging us. You see, I don't care if you got a paper cut, whatever, from a paper cut to all the way into some serious surgery. You share what you're being afraid about. You share what you're going through, whatever it is. At one point or another, most of us have kind of been through some of the things that each of us have been through, you see. And this is what's wonderful where someone like um, Sister was talking about the floaters. It's like somebody may have gone through what you went through and then they can say, yes, I went through that. I went through this surgery. I went through that procedure, blah, 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 whatever that may be. And this is what I, it entailed. And I came out through the other side just fine. And then that can bring you a sense of comfort. Well, sister went through this as well. You see. Celestial Cini... Sinus T, sold at Walmart. Thank you, Carol Bear. Thank you so very much. I'm picking it up and moving it around so I can see. Yes, living for Jesus, exactly. A cup, be a cup before bed, helpful with cold and flu. Yes, wayfaring stranger, exactly. I've been having G living for Jesus in my head. And as I was reading the Bible aloud at work, I was by myself, glory to God. I was reading the Bible by myself. Somebody said something about floaters in the age of 40. Hold on. Yes, love light. 
Yeah, it's 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 kind of scary if you feel a symptom of something, right? But it's something very ordinary. But you don't know that because it's the first time you felt a certain symptom of something, right? So you start getting kind of terrified. What was that from? Why did I just feel this or that, right? And then, you know, you're going to go to the doctor or whatever, but you come in and share and everyone shares their experience. It kind of calms you down. It calms you down. At least it does me. Yeah, they did extensive testing when I, going to the eye doctor is a completely different experience in 2019 than it is, it was in like 1979. Oh, beloved, it's a completely different situation. You used to just go in and fill out your paperwork and you go directly into and sit in the booster seat. I call it the booster seat. And then the doctor would uh, turn the light on to E all the letters at a distance and point at them, you know, and then he would put that thing in front of your eyes with the two sets of lenses. And then as he's going click, 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 he goes, what do you see now? What can you read now? And then you go, you read the line and then he goes, click, 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 click. What do you see now? He isolates one eye or the other, right? And then all of a sudden he releases it and now you have both. And he says, now go ahead and read. And you read just about all the way to the bottom. And then your prescription is determined. And about two or three weeks later, after you pick your glasses, you get your glasses. Now I go in, I fill out the paperwork, and you're going to this machine where they put your chin. You put your chin in there, and you set your forehead forward in this one thing, and your chin in the other. And you're looking through... And she's asking you a bunch of different questions. What do you see here? I'm like, is this the exam through this machine? I'm all ignorant. Haven't been to the eye doctor in a while. <laughs> so she's doing all these different things. And then um, I think after that, then you go in and see the optometrist. And then everything I just described. It's a whole different level. And this is what I do not like. And they have to do it when they put the drops in to open up your eye. What do you call that? When they open up your eye and you, you need to have some sunglasses on for a bunch of hours after. Okay, Wayfaring Stranger, I think I need to go in. It's this eye right here. Dilate, exactly. They put those drops in. You get in there and you go outside. You can't even hardly see. You know, it's all bright for hours. Yeah, it, just about three days ago. Yes, Lena, thank you. Thank you, Carol Bear. Dilate. $0.97? Cents? That's cheap. But yeah, all of a sudden I, I, I notice a little floater, but it's kind of strange because it, I don't know how to describe this. I'm going to sound like I'm crazier than usual. It's almost like seeing lightning in a weird way. Like all of a sudden there's a weird, there's a weird flash of light on the very side of the eye. It's very strange. So I think I, I, I need to schedule, I need to schedule an appointment. Yeah, weird flashlight thing. My blood pressure, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think I gotta go in. I, I hate the thought of going back to that place. I don't like going out in public. I just, I don't know. Lately I've had such a discomfort level but I'd rather check it soon. Exactly correct, sister. Better safe. Uh -huh.
Yeah, the exams are uh, the exams are covered. I do believe. I can't do anything right now. I'll just be frank with you. I'm I'm waiting for my paycheck on the 20th. I'm going to pay for my car. Remember I had to put the payments back? Two payments, y'all know the deal. All 24 of you can relate. You know, this comes at this time, so I have to wait. I don't feel a sense of any kind of um pain or anything like that. And I haven't done anything to hurt myself in any kind of a way. Mm. The only thing I've been doing is having a cough a -thon. Coughing, 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 coughing. Oh, my gosh. You know, the, the chest is filled, you know, and you got to let it out. I ain't going to say no further than that, but y'all know. You got to let all the stuff. Almost. Hi, almost. No, it's not a flash of floaters. It's just, and I'm thinking what it has to do with is the bifocal portion of my glasses. You see the bifocal? I don't know if you can see that. But the bifocal, I'm adjusting. I usually have a no-line lens is what I had the last time. And you know with a bifocal, you're trying to look straight ahead. You're trying to look straight ahead. But if you flick up just a little bit, it's kind of, you know, it just sort of goes back and forth. Yeah, I don't believe, in my humble opinion, that there's anything seriously wrong. I really don't. Yeah, no, there isn't any large flashings. It's just that I'm at my job and I've got also my goggles are bifocal. My goggles are. Yes, love light. I understand. You're scaring me, love light. <laughs> love light, you're scaring the bejeevers out of me. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> See, I have, a, I have a weird kind of a mind where I don't want to think about something because I'll be, think, I'll be thinking about it for like all day. Like, you know, like I'll think about it constantly. But I really, yeah, I've been coughing like a dog, if I'll be honest for with you, because my chest was all filled. I woke up, I, I, set, I put a pillow behind my head. It's like this. If your chest is filled with phlegm, it's got to come out. You can't have it in there. So the Lord knows exactly what he was doing when he made the human body. He knew eventually we would get a cold. And he knew for some of us that we would have phlegm. So what does the Lord create? The tickle in your throat. You know that little tickle in your throat? It's unrelentless, right? So tickle, tickle, you start to cough. The reason why you start to cough is because you got to clear your lungs. You got to get that stuff out of you. And then you start to feel better incrementally. That's all out of you. The it's Slowly the aches and the pain stop. And then after that, your strength starts to return. But when you're coughing and coughing like that, you, like you say, you were talking about the, the, the constant coughing could affect up here, right? But also your stomach starts to hurt because you're, who is that? Hi, painting for beginners. Hi, painting for beginners. Hi, CJ Mendoza. So you're just dealing with all this. And then you got to drag your blessed assurance to work. Ooh. You know? But yeah, it's so annoying. And I know exactly what I'm going to have. Olive leaf extract. Okay. I'm okay painting for beginners. Hold on, hold on. I want to hold on. I saw my doctor a few weeks ago for pain and shoulder numbness, pain in hand. The doctor said I need to stop using the chainsaw. 
I wish I wish I could laugh really loud. <coughs> All I probably do is cough. Repetitive, repetitive olive leaf extract is a powerful antibiotic and antifungal. Thank you so much. Yeah, when you're doing anything repetitively, repetitively, and I got potatoes big enough that I can hold a potato, I have very big hands, right, in my opinion. They are not dainty hands. Oh, so I can hold one of the potatoes, and so you're just going like this. What are you doing? You're lifting it up, you're reaching, and then it's you're reaching like this, and you got the weight of the tater. You don't think about it, right? And then you pull it to you, you pick it up, and you throw it. Now do that five thousand times. Just keep, just do that five, ten thousand times. You just do that over and over for twelve hours, a half hour lunch, and three fifteen minute breaks. But just do that. And then, you know, you, you, you got to pick up the trash can and throw stuff out. Then you got to take a squeegee and you're still using it now. You're still using the same arm and you're working that squeegee. You're pushing those potatoes in the thing, you know, and you repeat over and over and over and over. And then, yeah, you're going to get numb. You're going to get sore. I can so relate to you cutting them trees and using that chainsaw. Yes, I can. But right now, I don't, I, 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 grandma don't feel, whew, grandma don't feel too good. Yeah, I did what way, warfare and stranger. Yes, DB, exactly. I forgot what I was going to say. Turmeric. Somebody else was talking about turmeric as well. It's like after raising my son and a lot of us feel like we're everybody's mom. If you have siblings with children, you feel like you're everybody's mother. Then you get a little bit older. You feel like you're everybody's grandmother. And then you go through your menopause and your hot flashes and your mood swings and all that. You're trying to go ahead if you're working to make it through so you can get your social security and sit down. And then you're dealing with all these things that happen once you turn 40, then you turn 50, then you turn 60. For some of us, for some folks, 70. So for some folks, almost 80. All these different things that happen with the aging process. And I am thinking to myself, Lord, with this aging process, considering I felt like I was everybody's mother and everybody's grandmother, and I've been working just like the rest of you, whether you work the job or you're raising your children. I just want to look up to the sky and say, Lord, you might as well say I'm 60. Can I get a break here? Can I get a break here? Can you not let another thing happen, please? <laughs> if I... I have to have the flu. Why do you have to have these floaters floating around in my eyeball? You know? You ever have all these little things? They're little things. It's no big deal. And I I get like a little baby. I'll tell you the truth. You kind of know other people. <coughs> Part of my slowness. You kind of know other people, not know, know them. You know people that are outright evil. You know people that are outright ungodly or run into them. Mm. 
They don't have a muscle ache in their body. There isn't one floater to be had. All their bills are paid. They got a bunch of stuff paid off. And here we are. I know that the enemy steps in to some degree. <clears throat> to some degree. Not always now. Some stuff we do to ourselves if we don't take care of ourselves. But every once in a while, there's 29 of you. All 29, count me as being number 30. There's 30 of us here. We goody goodies. We goody goodies want to win. <laughs> we don't want to have not one more thing happen. Can I have a one? Now, one more thing happen, please. I understand that our faith is to be tested. I understand that. Give me a second. Yeah, so I'm just sort of running around kind of lightheaded and tired, you know, I'm just running around in a circle. Yes, living for Jesus. And that's what I was thinking about as I was watching the videos talking about faith, that our faith will be tested and that nobody on the earth who loves the Lord and serves God will not leave this planet without their faith being tested, without the enemy trying to step in or stepping in. Yes, DB. Oh, I know that the wicked will not prosper always. That's why I questioned about coming on tonight because I knew I was a little bit loopy. Goodness gracious. Psalm number 30. That's the other thing I said I want to read and I thought, am I going to read and cough halfway through? That kind of bothered me. Um, Psalm number 30. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. Again, Psalm number 30, verse number 2. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In, in his favor is life. And here we have heard this part of this scripture many, many a time. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved again. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. That thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper.
Thank you, wayfaring stranger. Thou has turned me for my mourning into dancing. Again, thou has turned for me my mourning <coughs> into dancing. Thou has put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. And this is a psalm that the sister left a comment and told me to read before I go to work. She said, every time before you go to work, read Psalm number 31. Psalm 31. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Never, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow, that, bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull or free me out of the net that they have laid privily or secretly for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that, re that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will, be, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities and has not shut me up or given me over into the hand of the enemy. Thank you, Father, for not giving us over into the hand of the enemy. Thank you, Father. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear or dread to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life, but I trusted, but I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. Many times my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies. Again, deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. I think I need to read that part again. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Father, make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed. Again, let me not be ashamed, O oh Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed. And let them be silent in the grave. Oh, hallelujah. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptu contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee. 
before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in, in the secret of thy presence. From the pri I gotta read that again. Thou shalt hide them in the secret secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, O ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I need to get I need to get some kind of sleep. I'm a little bit loopy. But I refuse to give up. A Psalm number 32. This will be the last one. Then we got to go. A blessed Psalm number 32. Psalm 32. A Psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth or counts not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old or grew old through my roaring or groaning all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Salah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Yes, I did. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity. Uh, have I not hid? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found again. Oh, yes. For this shall every one seek God while he can be found, beloved. Seek him while you can still find him. Oh, hallelujah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come near unto him. Thou art what? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass or surround me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. And verses 8 and 9 are in red, assuming that the Lord himself is saying these words. Verse 8 and 9, verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, that would be all 19 of you, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass us around him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. And shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. I want to thank you all so very much. And I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over those mind-binding demons. I take spiritual authority and bind that in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We come in together and join hand in hand in the spirit. And we take authority over those mind binding demons in the name of Jesus Christ. We take authority and bind also the following, uh, the hindering spirits, lying spirits, the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus Christ. We never come in our own strength, but at the name of Jesus Christ, which all these demonic forces are going to have to bow down to eventually, <clears throat> which is why uh, not having to bow down that they were coming up against us so hard. Uh, also, the retaliatory spirits that would try to get back at a person as they wish to share and take authority over them, as you wish to encourage one another. Any physical ailments, complete healing in the authority of Jesus Christ's name. I sense hindrances coming up against me in the name of Jesus Christ. As the spirit of fear tries to rear its ugly head in my direction over my physical, some of the things I am dealing with naturally and physically. And also over uh, the thought, thoughts that are being over exaggerated in my mind. As I come into agreement with all of you, <coughs> that all those hindrance, hindrances are bound in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> and we take authority in the name of Jesus. Y'all keep me in prayer. Grandma is very, very tired right now. I feel like I've been through a ground, I've been ground through a mill. And um, they're just a little bit confused, but now I got that kind of okay. And now I'm just dealing with the physical. And the depression is trying its best to knock at my door, but the door has been Holy Ghost sealed. Y'all feeling me? But the door has been Holy Ghost sealed. Um, I received another letter from my sister. I'm not taking anything, Regina. I'm taking nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. I received another letter from my sister Carmen apologizing for her previous letter. And she apologized for her previous letter. And she said one of the reasons, of course, I'm not going to belabor this, is she says she weighs 250 pounds. And she didn't want to see me or me to see her. But that is a poor excuse, in my humble opinion, to go off and be so uh, ugly uh, with your narcissistic, narcissistic self, as I think you're dealing with some things up here. So um, I may write her back. I don't know. I'm just dealing. I'm just dealing. Glory to God. Thank you so very much. I thank you all so very much for your prayers. And um, I do not know, pardon me, I got to adjust my sock. <laughs> I do not know what I would do without y'all. I just do not know. Thank you so very much for your prayers. Living for Jesus and Allison. And I think it was DB about her daddy. And Miss Jackie Blue. Needing a place to live. Oh, that's still in my mind. Just because I don't mention it, Jackie Blue is still in my mind as far as her having a place to live and any and all of the rest of you that are dealing with things. We love you, Miss Allison, too. Miss Mahalia and Miss um, 
Miss Lena and Mrs. H and Tess Cooks for you, Living for Jesus and Love Light, Regina M, CJ Mendoza, Wayfaring Stranger, M Mahala 55. I think I mentioned Mrs. H, who is an absolute wonderful human being. Evelyn Jones and CJ Mendoza. And I think I mentioned Regina M. I'm scrolling back down, my dear, my dears. And Patricia Jenkins and yes. And Love Light. Thank you for all the helpful advice, Love Light. You are a wealth of information, which we all do appreciate. You know a lot about the um, natural remedies. You are a wealth of information that does not go unnoticed, Love Light. Love Light, I'm very grateful to have you with us, to share that with us. Thank you so very much. I think I mentioned Wayfaring Stranger. D B. Carol Bear. Look at all these names. Look at all these names of all these wonderful people that, you know, would take time out of their day painting for beginners. That would take a little bit or a lot of their time to come in and visit with grandma. Hoyang X1, H O A N G. Well, those are people that I'm subscribed to and we watch each other's videos from foreign lands. Aman Sadihi. <coughs> Y'all excuse me. <clears throat> Everybody, please take good care of yourselves and please keep living for Jesus in prayer for her surgery and Allison Exploration and DB's parents. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I love y'all so very, very much. Just pray that I get this all together. I'm just dealing with a lot up here. I love y'all so much. Bye, everybody.